A very good evening to you all, ladies and gentlemen. The galaxy of luminaries, distinguished guests, respected teachers, and my dear students. It is immense pleasure <coughs> extending a very warm welcome to you all at the virtual <laughs> seminar on Bongo Bundhu, a universal voice a political poet, uh, echoing in Milton, Shelley, and Whitman. The seminar is organized by the Department of English, Government Bangla College, on the occasion of the birth centenary of the father of the nation, Bangabundhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Today, we feel honored to have with us Professor Dr. Ferdowsi Khan, principal of this college, as the respected chief guest. She has made outstanding contribution towards attaining congenial academic atmosphere and quality education. We feel proud by her distinguished and illuminating work in numerous capacities. We also have Professor Muhammad Jahangir Hussain, the vice principal of this college, as our special guest. He is a man of distinct vision and to all of us. We have another seasoned scholar and navigator of knowledge, Professor Muhammad. Abu Bakr Mia, the chair of the Department of Physics as our guest of honor. The chairperson of today's seminar is Professor Sabrina Ishrat, the chair of the Department of English, Government Bangla College, Dhaka. Under her dynamic leadership and commitment, we are working as a team to achieve the vision of our department. Now, we would like to begin the program with the kind permission of the chair, Professor Sabrina Ishrat. Respected audience, at the outset, I would like to request Kari Abdurrahman Abdurrahman Bilali to recite from the Holy Quran. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سنة من قد أرسلنا قبلك من رسلنا ولا تجد لسنتنا تحويلا أقيم الصلاة لذنوق الشمس إلى غسك الليل وقرآن الفجر إن قرآن الفجر كان مشهودا ومن الليل فتحجد به نافلة لك عسى أن يبعثك ربك مقاما محمودا صدق الله العظيم Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Shariar, for the recitation. Now, I'd like to invite Ms. Jumur Pal, to recite from the Holy Gita. Ms. Jumur Pal, lecturer, Department of English. Om Namo Bhagavate Vashudivai. Simad Bhagavad Gita, Dito Adhayo, Shankho Jum. Karmane Badhi Karaste, Ma Faleshu Kadachana, Ma Karmo Fala Hetur Bhurma, Shte Shangahasta. Akarmani. In Holy Gita, Bhagavan Sri Krishna has said, you have a right to perform your prescribed duties. 
but you are not entitled to the fruits of your actions. Never consider yourself to be the cause of the result of your activities, nor be attached to inaction. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, <clears throat> Om Shanti. No. Thank you very much, Ms. Jamur, for the recitation. Distinguished presence, kindly allow me to say a few words about the background of today's seminar. We all know that the greatest Bengali of all times, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, is the architect of Bangladesh and the father of the Bengali nation. He is the undisputed visionary leader as well as the driving force of the independence of Bangladesh. He was conferred upon the title Bangabandhu, friend of Bengal, by the people of Bangladesh. Bangabandhu was not born as a political leader. He sacrificed a lot in social and political services for the cause of humanity. Bangabandhu wrote in his own autobiography, as a human being, I think about the whole nation of the universe. Besides, I'm deeply concerned about the issues related to Bengali since I am a Bengali. The source of this harmony is love, endless love, which makes my politics and existence more significant. The philosophy of Bangabandhu has been put succinctly in this statement. He was not only the leader of Bangladesh, but also the leader of the whole world. Now, may I request Professor Muhammad Ilyas Ahmed to deliver his keynote speech on the topic of today's seminar, Bangabandhu, a universal voice, a political poet. Echoing Milton, Whitman, and Shelley. I'm confident that his deliberation is going to be very informative and insightful. He is going to deliver his keynote speech on the first part of the topic of today's seminar, that is Bangabandhu, a universal voice, a political poet. I sincerely believe that everyone will enjoy it. So please welcome Professor Muhammad Ilyas Ahmad. Thank you very much. Professor Sabrina Isfet, Honorable Head of the Department of English in the Chair, Professor Dr. Ferdowsi Khan, Honorable Principal, Government Bangla College, SC Guest, Professor Muhammad Jahangir Hussain, Honorable Vice Principal, Government Bangla College, a special guest, Professor Muhammad Abu Bakr Mia, Honorable Head, Department of Physics, as guest of honor, my sagacious colleagues in the department, my learned associates of the college, student leaders of the college, students of all years, and efficient office staffs. Good evening and a cluster of good wishes of the new year 2021. On Muzi Centenary, as a sincere attempt of paying tribute to Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the greatest of all Bengalis of all times, the father of the nation, the architect of independent Bangladesh, I am in front of you with my paper presentation. The very title of my presentation presentation is Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib, a, <laughs> a political poet. Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman, popularly known as Koka in his boyhood, latterly glorified and glorified Bangladesh when he was born to Sarah Khatun and Sheikh Lutfu Rahman in today's Tungi Para under Gopalgan's district on 17 March 1920. With a rare entity, he was growing up 
and began to draw the attention of the people around him, even from his boyhood. Unlike the other ten boys, he would show his leadership, guardianship, and attachment like a mature soul in his boyhood. Once, during his school life, when he was just in class age, he stood on the way of A.K. Fazil Haq, the then chief minister of the undivided Bengal, and demanded the repair of the dilapidated tin roof of his school building with an attractive argument. Mr. Fazil Haq was astonished and impressed greatly for the boy's bravery, moral courage, leadership quality, and patriotic enthusiasm, and instantly took Nancy's steps for that. Kokar sharply owned his school, schoolmates, and amassed himself as a voice for the sufferers. We all know the British rule in India ended on 14 August 1947, and then on the basis of two national theory regarding religion, two independent countries, Hindustan and Pakistan, that mean India and Pakistan were born. Pakistan had two parts, being included as a province of Pakistan. The name of East Bengal, that means today's Bangladesh, became East Pakistan. The other part was known as Pakistan. The East Pakistan constituted over 56% of the total population of Pakistan. Yet the authority of running the country was centered in the opulent hands of West Pakistan. Since the inception, the ruling class of Pakistan began to keep the lingual, literary, economic, political, and social power of East Bengal in their own grief and discriminated us inhumanly. The people of East Bengal could understand the very obnoxious political nature of Pakistan, and at the same time, they could understand the danger of two nation theory based on religion. Before the birth of Pakistan, the East Bengal was much better than Pakistan economically, socially, culturally, and educationally. But after the birth, the East Pakistan began to lag behind very fast, and the discrimination was increasing between the two parts. From 1955 to 1965, the West Pakistan enjoyed the economic budget five times more than that of the East Pakistan. The lion's share of the foreign currency earned by the East Pakistan Pakistan by exporting duty, leather, etc., was spent in the development of West Pakistan. This way, in the field of administration, education, defense, social development, etc., the West Pakistan deprived the East Pakistan inconsiderately. The people of East Pakistan united under Bengali nationalism, and they were fortunate enough to find out their reliable fires. The leader, Bangamandu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, to organize protests, not been a struggle against these deprivations. We know the inevitable movements and struggles in which Sheikh Mujib took part actively. The Pakistan government, first of all, attacked on our mother tongue, Bangla, to keep the mother tongue, Bangla, afield as straight language, language movement began and as an integral part of their Sheikh Mujibur Rahman went on hunger strike in jail and emerged as a rare entity for the oppressed, depressed, and deprived. For his active participation in the language movement, Sheikh Muzib was arrested twice and sent to jail where he was imprisoned till 27 February 1952. As a proponent, Sheikh Muzib Rahman led the Six Point Movement, which focused on all the rights, including the economic, political, and military rights of the people of East Bengal, and was declared a separatist and number one enemy of Pakistan. The aim of Sheikh Muzi's policies, the aim of Sheikh Muzi's politics and struggles was the emancipation of his people and independence of Bangladesh. He realized that without armed struggle, independence would be impossible. So with his people, he planned both in East Bengal and Agartala to attack all the cantonments of East Bengal in a commando style and declared independence, which is historically known as Agartola conspiracy case. Sheik Muzib and 34 others were made accused. Because of this case, the mass upheaval of 1969 took place and called the fall of Ayukan government. Then Yahya Khan took the presidency and was compelled to give the general election for the first time. The army league led by Sheikh Muzib only a landslide victory in that election, held on 7 December 1970. Actually, it was a great victory of the Bengali nationalism and his voice, Sheikh Mujib, 
and the great defeat of the Pakistan government and the self-seeking group. After the election, the Pakistan government continued conspiracy to hand over power to Amili. Yahya postponed the session of the General Assembly on 1st January 1971. Sheikh Muzif called civil disobedience, non cooperation movement. People spontaneously responded. The willful delay and hypocrisy of Yahya can compel the undisputed vice Sheikh Mujib to urge his people to participate in the liberation war in what? arms. Convert every house into a fort, confront the enemy with whatever you have. On the night of 25 uh, March, the Pakistan military committed the brutal genocide. On the first quarter of 26 March, on the eve of his arrest, Sheikh Mujib declared independence. Then freedom fighting started in the full motion. And after nine months, finally, we own our victory. Thus, from 1948 to 1971, in all movements and struggles, Gangamundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman had an undisputed sway. Through the activities, struggles, and movements of Sheikh Mujib's entire life, Gangamundu emerged as voice for the deprived of rights of the East Bengal. That been studies in Bangladesh. This voice was then very solicited, cherished, and relevant in this style. Bangabundu wanted a non communal, secular, and non discriminatory country where people of all religions and categories would live peacefully and keep their country's stability. In our Bengal, Hindus and Muslims, Bengalis and non Bengalis are all brothers. We are responsible for their safety. People around the world now. Realize the appeal of this voice, the importance of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, while famous intellectuals, political leaders, and social Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib is a role model in the 21st century. He was relevant. He is relevant and he will remain relevant because of his having a universal level in the midst of the people who are being ruled, discriminated, oppressed, depressed, and deprived inhumanly. In today's uncertain and challenging times, Sheikh Muzi's vision continues to be relevant for every. His people-centered policies were focused on ensuring equal opportunities and inclusive development for all. His tiresome activism epitomized the principles of advancing social inclusion, empowerment, and justice. By following Bangabandhu's pragmatic leadership, vision, and guidance, the government of Sheikh Hasina has achieved remarkable progress in accelerating inclusion development, a unique experiment to understanding policies and drivers of Shish economic development that can be followed by developing countries around the world. Notably, Bangladesh's impressive inclusive economic growth above 7% for over the first decade, which has significantly contributed in reducing extreme poverty. Moreover, life expectancy, life expectancy has markedly increased child and maternal mortality declined sharply. Women's empowerment increased, digital connectivity expanded marked, markedly, and social harmony achieved. This continuous progress has enabled Bangladesh to meet the criteria for graduation from LDC status in March 2018. If, as expected, Bangladesh will meet the criteria again in 2021, by its 50th birthday, it will be recommended for graduation in 2024 by the UN General Assembly. Bangamundu UN General Assembly in 1974 said, I should like to conclude by reaffirming my faith in the ideal, indomitable spirit of man in the capacity of the people to achieve the impossible and to overcome insurmountable odds. So long as the ruling classes, the ruling and the rule will exist, and the rule will strive for emancipation. In that finish when the world is not in humanity is the only option to find solution. To the literary intellectuals and political critics, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib is a political poet. Bangabandhu's seven March piece is a rhythmic prose. And here he is a lyrical poet because this piece sounds melodious, lyrical, and symmetrical. And it is interesting enough to be memorized. With the audience, can but continue listening to it. As listeners, our patience is never overtaken with monotony. 
because of its special importance and Bangabundu's poetical spirit in it, this piece was included in UNESCO's Memory of the World International Register as documented heritage on 13th October 2017. A poet, according to the great romantic Wordsworth, can easily realize human nature and chooses common language for the interest of the common people. Bangabundu Sheikh Muzib probably realized the nature of Pakistan government. Sikh Mujib always shows very common and must use language to convey his political message and philosophy to his people and thus bore the flavor of a romantic. Moreover, like the romantics, he had to undergo sufferings, still sufferings for 12 years of the deprivation of his beloved people during the 24 years reign of Pakistan. Wordsworth in his preface to his lyrical blood said, Poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings, which is obvious to notice in Sex Muzif when he said, Mr. Yahya, you are the president of Pakistan. Come and observe how the poor people of my country are being mowed down with bullets. Come and see how our mothers are being deprived of their children, how my people are being massacred. Come, observe, and only then pass a judgment on what is going on. Kids in his or to a tongue, use rhetorical question. Where are the songs of spring? I, where are they? Say, Mr. Muzif, in his speech, what have we done that was wrong? Didn't I say a long time back? What's the point of another roundtable conference? Who will I sit with? Should I sit with those who shed the blood of my people? Bangamundu Sheikh Muzif, the great hero in the political history, voiced against the inhuman oppression inflicted on his people and gave them directives of solution in an attractive poetic style. Minimal on the Goon in his poem gave the expression about Bangabundu's seven months peace. A bit public have been awaiting at the race course my then to listen to a poem by Bangabundu Sheikh Mujib. What an awaiting. At last the poet came like Rabindranath in stimulating state and made them listen. The struggle this time is a struggle for emancipation. The struggle this time is a struggle for independence. Bangabundu said, Bangabundu and Shakespeare are alike on the point that both have godlike details man in creation and narration. Sheikh Muzib narrated, narrated the Pakistan government as Shakespeare created his characters in his immortal place. Sheikh Muzib is a renaissance. He himself is politically aware and he has made his people politically aware. Like Bacon, he is practically wise and candid. Terseness and a frustic style, which are salient features of Bacon's essays, prevail in Mazif's peace. The people of Bengal now want to be free. The people of Bengal now want to live. And the people of Bengal now want to have their rights. Slaves are declared free. The right of children, laborers, and women was preserved in the Victorian period. Democratic attitude and constructive policies developed in the Victorians. The Victorians strive for economic progress. Sheikh Muzib is a Victorian as he had distress in his activities. Like Robert Browning, he's optimistic when he said, Remember, since we have already had to shed blood, we'll have to shed a lot more of it. By the grace of God, however, will be able to deliver the people of this land. Bangabundu, humanitarianism, love of liberty, and hatred of oppression and suppression turned him into a rebel, which is found in Shelley also. Like Bangabundu, Shelley is a dreamer, a visionary. Nozul is the Biden of Bengal, and Sheikh Mujib, and Sheikh Mujib is both. Nasul and Byron, like them, he protested against the domination, exploitation, tyranny, oppression, and hypocrisy. In his revolutionary zeal, Sheikh Muzib is Nazul. Like Nazul, he is outstanding in inspiring people for movement and struggle, which he did by uniting his people. There is a similarity between Nazul's Bidrohi and Whitman's Song of Myself, and these two are similar to. Bangabundu's seven Mars peace, Whitman advocates universal democracy, 
He personifies the spirit of universal brotherhood. His concept of democracy is based on the inherent dignity and nobility of the common man. Like Bangabandhu's, his democracy is practical, which means self is inclusive of all. Bangabandhu Sheikh Muzib never sang for himself. He sang for the emancipation of his all people exploited and discriminated by the Pakistan government. I don't want the prime minister's office. I want the people of this country to have their rights, said Bangabandhu. I want so far as to say that if anyone came up with offer that was just, even though we were in the majority, would agree to that offer. Thank you. Thank you very much for your concentration on my presentation. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Elias Bhai. Thank you very much, sir, for your valuable and insightful speech. Your deliberation will further expand the scope of our knowledge about Bangabandhu. Now, it's time for the presentation of the second keynote speaker, Ms. Rihana Munni, Associate Professor, Department of English, Government, Bangla College. May I request Ms. Rihana Munni to express her views on the second part of the topic, Bangabandhu, Equine in Milton, Shelley, and Whitman. So let us welcome Ms. Rihana Munni. Good evening. A warm welcome to the distinguished guests and all present here. I am Rehana Munni, Associate Professor, Department of English, Government Bangla College, Dhaka. I am here to present a paper of today's seminar on Bangamandhu, a universal voice, a political poet echoing in Walt Whitman, John Milton, and Shelley. At first, I would like to pay tribute to the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman is the architect of modern Bangladesh. He is one of the most influential and courageous leaders of the world. Throughout his life, he championed the cause of democracy equality and social justice. He was a visionary. He dreamed of building a Shonar Bangla. His dream keeps the people of Bangladesh alive even today. Bangladesh marches ahead under the dynamic leadership of his daughter, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, with a view to fulfilling his dream. We find the reverberation of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman's ideals in some of the poets in English literature. In my paper, I am focusing on Walt Whitman, John Milton, and Percy B.C. Shelley. Walt Whitman is a famous American poet who is known as a poet of democracy. Now, I am focusing on John Milton. John Milton, a brilliant English poet who stood for moral righteousness, fought against injustice and tyrannies, and fought for establishing justice and order. Now, I am talking about Percy B.C. Shelley. Shelley is a revolutionary poet and a visionary, and he is very optimistic who deemed a better world for mankind, free from all kinds of deprivation, anxieties, and tyrannies. Now I am focusing on Whitman. The psychological makeup of Whitman was such that he was to extol democracy. He was a keen student of political reality and the clear and sharp views on the political parties of that time like the kingdom of heaven, the democracy of women, Whitman are open to all alike, irrespective of any caste, color, and creed. Whitman strongly believed 
that love is the mainstay of the universe and all creation of god is equally holy and valuable our father of the nation bangabandhu sheikh mujibur rahman was more than a poet he was more than a philosopher his amazing speech on the historic 7th march captivated people of all classes it had electrifying effects on its listeners and it had an universal appeal whitman sang up myself which is considered as the bible of democracy contains his firm belief in the equality of all sexes in section 21 of song of myself whitman says i am the poet of the women as the same as the men and i say it is great to be a woman as to be a man whitman does shows himself as a true democrat who is conscious of the inherent dignity of all sexes democracy is one of the major themes of whitman he is an authentic spokesman of democratic tendencies of america and her people who is considered as the faith holders of human freedom he was opposed to the restraints and checks that the government are in the habit of putting on individuals liberty whitman's democracy is essentially spiritual in which there are no prerogatives no vested interest no erogation of power or authority by one over another in such a democracy it is possible to achieve universal peace toleration and brotherhood democracy depends on the cooperation of its members whitman said everything will perish in institutions customs love of comrades will survive whitman was the most uncompromising champion of fraternity and brotherhood whitman celebrated the masses in his poetry whitman was a true patriot who sang about the glory of his country and countrymen during the civil war he wrote a number of patriotic poems urging the people of his country to stand united and march onward fearlessly towards the common goal of equality of all people and thus lay foundation of a democratic society he identified himself fully with the movement in the political social and religious life of america whitman is fully american whitman faithfully and comprehensively reflects the culture the life the spirit of america in case of bangabandhu we also say find that both bangladesh and bangabandhu are identical we cannot separate the two we cannot imagine bangladesh without bangabandhu he is our great patriotic leader on april 19 1864 the frightful and the most painful news of lincoln's death reached whitman he took the tragedy to heart in the following weeks he wrote his great elegies on abraham lincoln when lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed and o captain my captain abraham lincoln waged a civil war for the freedom of the negro slaves and saved his country from the disintegration from disintegration this two elegies are the most sweet and sonorous nocturne ever chanted in the charts of the world which are the finest whitman ever wrote our bangabandhu was an icon of democracy like whitman throughout his life he fought for establishing the rights of his people he always stood for his country and like abraham lincoln bangabandhu sheikh mujibur rahman all throughout his life struggled hard to make bangladesh free from the inhuman inhuman inhumanity oppression and atrocities of the pakistani rulers bangladesh achieved its long cherished independence under the charismatic leadership of the father of the nation bangabandhu sheikh mujibur rahman now i am focusing on milton Milton was a great genius. 
Milton's works was a unique asset for English literature for all times. Milton, a majestic poet, remains an, an ardent idealist. Milton, in his great works, offers unchanging font of his colossal personality. He stands as a perpetual monument in, in the pioneering spirit in man to which human civilization is indebted. Milton hated industries because he thought that it is an enemy of people. In his fiery jail against injustice, he is dominated by a soldier's spirit, which finds expression in the characters of his poems. He fought against monarchy. Like Mintran, Bangabandhu struggled hard throughout his life. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was arrested, kept detained, but he never lost courage. He was unflinching in his courage. However, being inspired by his seventh mass speech, our freedom fighters fought bravely for long nine years. Like Milton, Bangabandhu each an ideal in the soul, like a lofty mountain in the horizon. He is like the Himalayas. His strict speech on the seventh march influenced the Bengali people to uh, fight the enemies with whatever they had. Seven crowd people, seven pe uh, crowd people of Bangladesh who had been undergoing the tyranny and maltreatment in all spheres of life got spreaded with the clarion call of Bangabandhu and liberated Bangladesh through nine month long sanguinary war. Milton wrote at a time of political upheavals. Milton was active at a time when hectic, hectic political activities much spoiled the spontaneity of literary activities of England. Milton himself was actively drawn to the great struggle of parliament against the despotic ruler and his followers in the defense of democracy and freedom. Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was uncompromising like Milton. Bangabandhu was solely interested in the fulfillment of the legal demands of the people of Bengal. He sharpened Bengali nationalism he organized the people with his organized political charisma. With his unprecedented organizing power, with his political wisdom and prudence, he brought about a revolutionary change, created and sharpened the national, national, uh, national, national spirit among the people. He is the earliest son of Bengal over a period, period of thousand years. Now, I am focusing on Shelley. Shelley in English literature is considered as an idealist, a dreamer, a visionary. He was the most, he was the poet of glorious future, possessed by a vision of intellectual liberty. Shelley contributed a new quality to English literature, a quality of ideality, freedom, and spiritual liberty. He was thinly dissatisfied with the existing order of things. He fought against political tyranny and wickedness, which made the life of mankind so unhappy and sorrowful. He wanted to liberate mankind from the chains of political, religious, and intellectual slavery. Like Shelley, Bangabandhu wanted to liberate Bengali people from the chains of political, social, economic, and intellectual slavery. Bangabandhu, a towering figure, a great friend of the people whose extraordinary power has been a source of inspiration for the people of Bangladesh. Bangabandhu, a visionary leader, who dreamed of Shonar Bangla and emancipated Bengali people from all kinds of bondage and deprivation. It is indeed a great deliberation. It has enriched our world of knowledge. We convey our thanks to 
Ms. Rehana Munni for her comprehensive remarks. Respected presence, let's enjoy something different. May I invite Ms. Shantona Rani Kundu, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Government Bangla College, to render a song. Shortari Bangla College in Bokhote, English B. Hagi Nibeda. I convey my best thanks to Ms. Shantona for her excellent performance. Now, I would like to invite our guest of honor, Professor Muhammad Abu Bakr Mia, respected chair, Department of Physics, Government Bangla College. So please welcome Professor Muhammad Abu Bakr Mia. A Samotkar Sondhai Abong Otonto Balo at Bishabustu Seminar English Bivak Kotikajito is seminar. A Yonustani Ama de Podano Titishabe Opustisasen, a college or Toko Professor Doctor Ferdosi Khan, Opodoko Mohodai, Professor Mamma Jahangir Hussein, Askeri Yonustanir. Shabhapoti, Professor Sabrina Israt, English Bibhagir Bibhagir Pradhan, Onna Nusha Hakurmi Brindor, Shikhatira, Assalamu Alaikum. Shamutkar Ekti, 
শিরোনাম বঙ্গবন্ধু এ ইউনিভার্সাল ভয়েস এ পলিটিক্যাল পয়েট একটা ছন্দ এ ইউনিভার্সাল ভয়েস এ পলিটিক্যাল পয়েট ইকোয়িং ইন মিল্টন শেলি এন্ড হুইটম্যান তো এখানে আমার একটু ব্যতিক্রম বা আমি একটু ভিন্ন কথা বলতে চাই সেটা আস্তে আস্তে বলি তবে এই যে এখানে জন মিল্টনের কথা চলে এসছে একজন ইংলিশ পয়েট প্যারাডাইস লস্ট প্যারা প্যারাডাইস রিগেইন আমরা সবাই জানি এই নামগুলো তারপরে হুইটম্যান আমেরিকান একজন কবি মানবতাবাদী তার পয়েট্রি লিপস অফ গ্যাস এখানে আমাদের রেহানা মুন্নি বলে গেছেন মিস রেহানা মুন্নি এবং লিপস অফ গ্যাস এ হুইটম্যান সেলিব্রেটেড ডেমোক্রেসি ন্যাচার লাভ এন্ড ফ্রেন্ডশিপ এগুলো ভারী ভারী কথা এগুলো আমি পদার্থ বিজ্ঞানের ছাত্র হিসাবে এই ভারী ভারী কথা এগুলো ইংলিশে যার স্কলার এখানে আছেন তাদের মুখে বেশি মানাবে দু একটা কথা আমি বলি যে লিপস অফ গ্যাস এ হুইটম্যান তার সে ডেমোক্রেসি কথা বলেছেন ডেমোক্রেসি তারপরে ফ্রেন্ডশিপ লাভ এগুলোর কথা বলেছেন মিল্টন মিল্টন ষোলোশো আট থেকে ষোলোশো চুয়াত্তর ওনার জীবনকাল তারপরে পিবি শেলি সতেরোশো বিরানব্বই থেকে আঠারোশো বাইশ ফার্সি বাইশ বেশি শেলি ওনার নামটা আসলেই সাথে সাথে নজরুলের নামটাও চলে আসে এই দুইজন কবি কিন্তু কবি লেখক বা সাহিত্যিক যাই বলি বিলং দা এইজ অফ অপারেশন অ্যান্ড আনজাস্ট টু দ্য কমনার্স সাধারণের উপরে এবং তাদের যে সাহিত্য কর্ম সাহিত্য কর্মের মাধ্যমে আমি যদি আপনাদের একটা কঠিন ভাষায় বলি দ্য রিভলটেড এগেন্স্ট অল সর্টস অফ এনার্কি ট্রাইরেনি অ্যান্ড মিশ্র আমরা কিন্তু একটা মিল খুঁজে পাই জাতির জনক বঙ্গবন্ধু আমাদের বাংলাদেশের স্থপতি আসলে সেই জন্ম শত বার্ষিকী ওনার তারই উপরে ভিত্তি করেই কিন্তু আমাদের এই অনুষ্ঠান মালা এবং আমাদের অধ্যক্ষ মহোদয় প্রত্যক্ষ মহোদয়ের পরিকল্পনায় আমরা বিভাগগুলো এগুলো করে যাচ্ছি সেই জাতির জনক বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিবুর রহমান তার যে ইকো ইকো শব্দটা এটা ফিজিক্স এর একটা শব্দ ইকো রিফ্লেকশন ইকো রিফ্লেকশন সেটা এক্সপ্লেন করতে গেলে এখানে একটু ভিন্নতা আসে আমি সেভাবে যাব না সময়ও আমার জন্য খুবই কম তো এখানে বঙ্গবন্ধুও কিন্তু সমস্ত ধরনের এনার্কি টাইরেনি মিশ্রুল এগুলোর বিরুদ্ধে কিন্তু প্রতিবাদ করেছেন বঙ্গবন্ধুও কিন্তু এখানে বলা হয়েছে ইউনিভার্সাল ভয়েস এ পলিটিক্যাল পয়েন্ট রাজনীতি রাজনীতির কবি হ্যাঁ উনি ওনার মহাকাব্য উনি রচনা করেছেন পার্থক্য একটা আছে সে পার্থক্যটা বলে আমি দ্রুত শেষ করব পাঁচ মিনিট সময় যতটুকু বলা যায় উনি ওনার মহাকাব্য রচনা করেছেন সেই সাতই মার্চের প্রফেসর ইলিয়াস যেটা বলে গেছেন সেই সাতই মার্চের ভাষণ সেটা কিন্তু একটা মহাকাব্য ছয় দফা এগারো দফা অন্যান্য যে বাণীগুলো বঙ্গবন্ধুর বিভিন্ন পর্যায়ে যেগুলো রয়ে গেছে আহ ভিডিও আকারে রয়ে গেছে অডিও আকারে লিপিবদ্ধ আকারে রয়ে গেছে বিভিন্ন ভাবে কিন্তু আমাদের এগুলো আহ উনি রচনা করেছেন উনি যে রচনা করেছেন সেটা কিন্তু আমি যেটা বলি আমি আমি রেসপেক্ট আমি এই যে পিবি শেলি জন মিল্টন হুইটম্যান প্রত্যেকের প্রতি আমার শ্রদ্ধা এবং তার অত্যন্ত পণ্ডিত ব্যক্তি স্কলার আমার বঙ্গবন্ধু যে রচনাটা করলেন কোন স্ক্রিপ্ট সারা সাতই মার্চে কোন লিখে উনি পয়েন্ট নোট করে নিয়ে যান বঙ্গমাতা বলে দিলেন যে তোমার মনে যেটা আসে সেটা তুমি বলো উনি বললেন মহাকাব্য রচনা কিন্তু হয়ে গেল এবং সে মহাকাব্য রচনা করতে গিয়ে উনি কিন্তু ওই শেলি বাইরন মিল্টন হুইটম্যান এদের কাছ থেকে কিন্তু উনি ধার করেন এবং সেই জন্য উনি বঙ্গবন্ধু উনি কিন্তু যে রচনাটা করেছেন সেই রচনাটা মানে স্পন্টেনাস স্বতঃস্ফূর্ত ভাবে স্পন্টেনাস এখানে এখান থেকে কোনো আগের থেকে রিহার্সাল দিয়ে উনি আসেন আমরা বক্তৃতা দিতে গেলে রিহার্সাল দিয়ে চিন্তা করি নোট করি ওই রকম রিহার্সাল দেননি উনি স্পন্টেনাস একটা এমিশন আমরা বলবো সেই সেই মহাকাব্য সেটা কিন্তু পার্থক্য সেটা হলো এই বঙ্গবন্ধু কিন্তু শেলি মিল্টন বাইরন এদের মতো হয়ে যেতে পারতেন বা হতেন 
যদি উনি ওনার ওই মহাকাব্যখানা রচনার পরে উনি ওনার কাজটা শেষ করে দিতেন হয়তো উনি নভেল লরেট হতেন হয়তো হতেন না হয়তো আরো দু একটা পুরস্কার পেতেন কবি হিসাবে কিন্তু না এক্সিকিউশন বঙ্গবন্ধু যেটা করেছেন যেটা শেলি করেননি ডিউ রেসপেক্ট তাদের প্রতি আমার সম্মান মিল্টন যেটা করেননি হুইটম্যান যেটা করেননি কিন্তু বঙ্গবন্ধু যেই দর্শন ওনার রচনায় ওনার কাব্যে উনি যেই দর্শনটা উনি লিপিবদ্ধ করলেন সেই দর্শনটাকে উনি বাস্তবায়ন করলেন ইমপ্লিমেন্ট করলেন সেই ইমপ্লিমেন্টেশন আমাদের এই বাংলাদেশ আমি আমি তো বলবো যে এই যে যে অনুরণন হচ্ছে রিভারবেরেশন যেটা হচ্ছে ইকো যেটা হচ্ছে সেটা কোথায় হচ্ছে আকাশে বাতাসে আকাশে বাতাসে উঠে রনি বাংলাদেশের প্রতিটি মানুষের হৃদয় বিশ্ব জনতার হৃদয়ে উনি যে ইমপ্লিমেন্টেশন উনি যে বাস্তবায়নটা করলেন সেই বাস্তবায়নটা কি উনি যে দর্শনটা দিলেন উনি যে মহাকাব্য লিখলেন সেই মহাকাব্যের প্রত্যেকটা পয়েন্ট পয়েন্টে সে মহাকাব্যের প্রতিটি পয়েন্ট মহাকাব্যের প্রতিটি দর্শন উনি নিজের হাতে ইমপ্লিমেন্ট করলেন এবং সেই ইমপ্লিমেন্টেশনের ফল কি আউটকাম কি আউটকামটা হচ্ছে আমার বাংলাদেশ কাজেই অবশ্যই সেটা তো আমরা সবাই জানি স্বীকার করি আমরা হয়তো একটা কম্পেরিজন পি বি শেলি জন মিল্টন হুইটম্যানের কথা বলা হয়েছে ওনাদের নিয়ে কথা বলতে গেলে আপনারা হয়তো আরো অনেক বলতে খুব মন হৃদয় গ্রাহী মিস মুন্নি রেহানা মুন্নি প্রফেসর ইলিয়াস ওনারা যে কথাগুলো বললেন খুব ভালো লেগেছে এবং চমৎকার এবং ওনারা যে পরিশ্রম করেছেন ওনাদের যে প্রজ্ঞা ওনাদের যে পাণ্ডিত্য সেগুলো উপস্থাপিত হয়েছে কিন্তু আমার বঙ্গবন্ধু সম্পর্কে আমার পারসেপশনটা হলো এই উনি সেই মহাকাব্য রচনা করেছেন সেটা বাস্তবায়ন করেছেন দেখেন আমি পদার্থবিজ্ঞানের ছাত্র পদার্থবিজ্ঞান কি করে ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং আর ফিজিক্স পার্থক্যটা কোথায় পার্থক্য কিন্তু একটা জায়গা ফিজিক্স কিন্তু এই যে দেখেন যে এই যে সিভিল ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং মেকানিক্যাল ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং ইলেকট্রিক্যাল ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং এগুলো কিন্তু ফিজিক্স আমরা পড়াই কিন্তু পার্থক্যটা আমরা ইঞ্জিনিয়ার নয় কেন আমরা ইঞ্জিনিয়ার নই এই কারণে যে আমরা এটা ইমপ্লিমেন্ট করি না ইমপ্লিমেন্ট করি না আমি বানাচ্ছি না বাস্তবে এটা রূপদান করছি না কাজে আমি কিন্তু সে কবি হয়েই রয়ে গেলাম পদার্থবিজ্ঞানের কবি হয়ে রয়ে গেলাম কিন্তু ইঞ্জিনিয়াররা কি করে সেটা আর বঙ্গবন্ধু যেটা হচ্ছে কি উনি কিন্তু নিজের কাব্য নিজেই রচনা করেছেন নিজে তৈরি করেছেন নিজে মহাকাব্য তৈরি করেছেন এবং সেটাকে উনি বাস্তবায়ন করেছেন আমার এটা ফিলিংস জাস্ট আজকে যে বিষয়বস্তু যে আলোচনা আমার কাছে এটাই আবার মনে হচ্ছিল যে আমি খুব একটা প্রস্তুতি নেওয়ার সময় পাইনি আসলে এগুলো খুব মেথডিক্যাল এবং এতই জ্ঞান গর্ভ আলোচনার আসর যে এখানে ওইভাবে প্রস্তুতি না নিয়ে কথা বলাটাও খুবই কঠিন তবে আমার অন্তর থেকে যেটা আসলো আমি সেটাই কিন্তু বললাম যে বঙ্গবন্ধু এই মহাকাব্য রচনা করেছেন উনি বাস্তবায়ন করেছেন উনি হিরো উনি সর্বকালের সর্বশ্রেষ্ঠ বাঙালি সেই কারণে হয়ে গিয়েছেন উনি কোনো একটা যুগের কবি নন উনি কোনো একটা এরার কবি নন উনি কি সর্বকালের সর্বশ্রেষ্ঠ বাঙালি সেলুত্ত বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিবুর রহমান তো আমি আমার দৃষ্টতা মাফ করবেন আমি আসলে এই প্রসঙ্গগুলো নিয়ে কথা বলার মতো ওইভাবে অতখানি যোগ্য নই আমি তারপরেও একটা অনধিকার চর্চা করেছি আমার মনে যেটা এসেছে আমার অন্তরে যেটা ইকো আমি সেই ইকোটাকে এখানে প্রকাশ করার চেষ্টা করেছি আর কিছু না তো ইংরেজি বিভাগকে অত্যন্ত ধন্যবাদ দিই যে তারা এই চমৎকার একটি আয়োজন করেছেন আমাকে একটু কথা বলার জন্য সুযোগ করে দিয়েছেন অধ্যক্ষ মহোদয় উপাধ্যক্ষ মহোদয়ের উপস্থিতিতে তাদেরকেও তাদেরও নির্দেশনায় এই অনুষ্ঠানগুলো আমরা করে যাচ্ছি সকলকে ধন্যবাদ দিয়ে আমি আমার এই বক্তব্য শেষ করছি আসসালামু আলাইকুম থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ স্যার দা পোয়েট অফ ফিজিক্স ফর ইউর রিসোর্সফুল অ্যান্ড ইন্সপায়ারিং স্পিচ নাও আই উড লাইক টু ইনভাইট প্রফেসর মোহাম্মদ জাহাঙ্গীর হোসেন our respected special guest of today's seminar and also the vice principal of this college to deliver his valuable speech he is going to express his thoughtful remarks on the keynote speeches so please welcome professor mohammad jahangir hussain okay good evening to all honorable chair of this virtual seminar uh, honorable chief guest of today's special seminar professor dr fedusikan our worthy principal of this college 
and guest of honor, Professor Rao Wakamiya. Also, the other departmental colleagues of English department, the presenter, and different teachers of different faculties of our college. Yeah, um, and our yeah, 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 yeah. and our students and viewers. So welcome to you all to this seminar. And also on the occasion of the Bangabundu's birth centenary, as well as the, uh, the celebration of Golden Jubilee of independence of Bangladesh. I would like to convey my special best wishes and as well as happy new year. Really, uh, I am really overwhelmed with the presentations and the comments, evaluation made by the two scholars. I mean, uh, their scholarly presentation and words to presenters. Elias and Rihanna Munni, really, uh, I would like to appreciate as one of the English teachers, being one of the faculty members of the department, that you uh, made a tremendous presentation with your labor, with your patience, and scholarly studies you have made. So really, uh, that should be like English department. I mean, the, the journalistic approach towards why Bangabundu is so universal. Why Bangabundu is still relevant, not only in Bangladesh, but also in terms of all the countries of the, of the nations of the world in all time. Uh, with a special reference to the tyranny, exploitation, oppression, uh, and discrimination, negligence, and the bereavement, hunger, whatever the, the, all the oppressive tendencies made by the rulers, oppressive rulers. And here is the Bangabundu. And here is the Bangabundu's voice. That Bangabundu appears with is that thundering voice of 7 March or before this 7 March, a lot of voices that he has delivered during his lifetime. And all the, this uh, actually that made him the universal poet, as well as the political poet. And really, the, the, I would like to also thank the uh, presenters that they have studied and made Bangabundu's this revolutionary spirit uh, with the other, with the other, uh, other, other place of English department, of English literature. Uh, who share the who share the same spirit uh, as shared by our Bangabundu. Really, our Bangabundu is very synonymous with Bangladesh. I would like to agree with all the uh, all these speakers. Bangabundu means Bangladesh. Bangabundu means Bang all Bang Bengalis. Bangabundu means there is thousand years the history of, uh, of Bengali cultures and histories that made Bangabundu the greatest Bengali of all times. And this relevance and this studies really, uh, I think, has made this seminar very enjoyable to all the viewers and all the teachers. And I think. In future, also the all the learners uh, uh, of the departments, and as well as the students, will be able to know Bengali history, Bengali culture, the role of Bangabundu, his contribution, and also how it is similar and how we, uh, Bangabundu influences the other ages. How Bangabundu's spirit is 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 magnanimously. Uh, very, very relevant to all time. We know that Bangabundu fought, fought during his lifetime, especially when that the seminar Professor Elias remembered when he was a student of class 10, that he revolted when uh, the Hotan Space Project came 
to visit his college. Really, he started his that voice. That that universal, that tribunal shifa started from that moment that yes, you see what happens to our school. And you are not allowed to go unless it is prepared. So really, Professor Elias has rightly focused on the matter that Bangabandhu starts with that thundering voice uh, even during his uh, uh, boyhood. And then gradually he remarked how the British colony, British colonialism, uh, that is the, the exploitation made by the British and, and then at the same time when in 1947 the division from the, the, uh, the British uh, and then uh, the unification of the two Bengalis, West uh, Bangla, Bengal and the East Bengal. But here the again exploitation. Again here the again the East Pakistan becomes the new colony under the West Pakistan. And here the Bangabandhu appears as, as that voice. And here the Bangabandhu appears as that political poet, that this very title today is justifiable. Because with his voice, if, if, if I, I would like to mention, especially the 1966 the six point demands, uh, and you see the 62, that is education movement, and you see 1969, that is the, the, the movement, 70 uh, general election, and then gradually 71, the 7 March. And, and especially I would like to say that Bangabandhu is actually focused as the political poet. And, the, uh, and during this, this with this, this uh, page, 7 March space. And already you know, 7 March uh, space already, uh, already uh, it has been recognized throughout the scholars of the world. And now it has been become the world heritage. And it is recognized by the UNESCO on the memory of the World Register of UNESCO. You know it well in 2017. And you will be happy to know that, uh, that I would like to mention another, another book, world famous book that is published by, uh, written by Jacob A. Field. And the title is, We Shall Fight on the Bases. And this is the collection of a lot of historical spaces, of uh, the political spirit, of the universality, of their uh, voice against oppression. And that is that is pieces uh, that inspire the history throughout the world. So now, uh, these two recognitions, that Bangabandhu, this is inclusion in the world heritage, and also Bangabandhu's space inclusion in the world famous book uh, that is Jacobin Field. Uh, so it clearly justifies his that revolutionary history. Clearly justifies his uh, that universality, that universal voice, that is political speech. And I, 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 I feel tempted to mention also that uh, our Bengali poet Nirvalanda Goons, that famous poet, that how Bangabandhu came as a poet, how Bangabandhu came as a poet like uh, Ramindunath with his that uh, thundering voice to address the nation and uh, that uh, the, this today's struggle. So, so this all the terms, I would like to say that, that the voice of humanity, voice from the core of the Bangladesh, voice from the core of the, his deep love towards Bangla, towards Bengalis, that is his love, Bangabandhu's politics, Bangabandhu's lifetime, his oppression, uh, his fight against the oppression, and his, uh, uh, you know, uh, most of even the more than uh, 12 or 13 years he spent in jail. So why? So all this is spirit, you, you see, this imprisonment, uh, when does a person become imprisoned? Of course, who is a revolutionary poet. Who is a thundering, a person, a personality with the thundering voice? So this historical background clearly justifies uh, today's seminar title, I believe it. So then again, if I consider the English literature, that how Bangabandhu is space, how Bangabandhu is relevant to English department, I think this is very interesting because our today's Audience, I think they will feel curious, interested to know how Bangabandhu is relevant to with the English literature. This is very interesting. 
and i think this is the success of this today's seminar how bangabandhu you know our english literature all the romantics romantic poet that were inspired coldridge shelley inspired by the french revolution in 1789 you know it very well and that is the three key words key words is very important that is what are the three words there is liberty that is uh, fraternity equality so try to understand the three key words and those three key words universally acknowledged that go together with bangabandhu shikhar roman our father of the nation and these three key words that dominated the spirit of the all the romantic words that is shelley byron wordsworth coleridge blake uh, for how that this is romantics how they were in place the student shelley they were in place by uh, these three key words and that shelley's today's one of the focus that kishtwa and pijarva his famous sort to us to win and also that is if winter comes can it spring be far behind that is relevant that that should be relevant to bangabandhu to study his uh, his personality that destroyer and preserver bangabandhu is the west wind of bangladesh of the of the world he started he, he came appeared at the storm to destroy the old oppressive system of the colonial patterns said by the british rulers as well as the organized or said by the pakistani rulers bangabandhu hanis and bangabandhu fought with his that revolutionary stormy personality isn't dear viewers so this is the here is the success and and, and he destroyed the old patterns oppression and he preserved the new order new order the new system of bangladesh that bangladesh should be independent free country not more anyway sub to be subjugated to any other nation like west pakistan or any other country bangladesh is a free nation and that's he made it successful in 71 bangabandhu that's uncompromising uh, accomplished leadership that made it this dream successful so th- these are the poets all this now whitman of course whitman that is the, his the love for democracy that how is the whitman relevant to bangabon you see whitman he believes in the uh, in, in the sovereignty of the common person personalities common man that i self a person a poet he he uh, encompasses all the personalities all the personalities so bangabandhu is that personality who encompasses the whole humanity whole bangladesh whole the spirit of the bengalis so that's why he is the uh, greatest bengalis of all time so this is very relevant to uh, bangabandhu and milton's milton's that uncompromising voice you know that uh, 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 our guest of honor uh, i think he focused on milton's speech that has lost yes milton is a revolutionary and milton fought against the all kinds of uh, that is uh, that is exploitation and monarchy monarchical uh, dictatorship and he fought against the charles the first one in 1949 and then the commonwealth established cromwell came in the history of england and Uh, and his pamphlets, his works, his views reflected in favor of republicanism, in favor of the Commonwealth. And even with the restoration in 1960, you see, Milton was really in danger. But his spirit, he took the allegorical representation of his universal voice of protest. In Paradise Lost, through the description of the Satan, Adams, he depicted his revolutionary power against that uh, autocracy of the royal society of that uh, charles the 2 or charles the one during his their operation so here the bangabandhu how he fought directly against the against the pakistani oppression and exploitation and the discrimination 
and attack on the Bengali language in 1952. In everywhere, eh, Bangabundu is there. Where is the oppression? Where is the subjugation? Where is the exploitation? And here is the Bangabundu. And here is Bangabundu's, uh, Bangabundu's that voice. Bangabundu appears as, as that political way. And today's title, I think is very important why that Bangabundu is termed as political poet. I'd like to mention that Bangabundu is given this title in 1971. I would like to, I, I have consulted the, the website, that, uh, the, that Newsweek magazine, and that was published in April 1971. And in that magazine, Bangabundu is termed as poet of politics. For, for the curiosity of the viewers, I'd like to mention that. And then again, Bangabundu as a poet was again highlighted in Time magazine, August, August in 1971. And the magazine, Time magazine, appreciated Bangabundu with the name that Bangabundu is a poet of politics. I would like to quote, a man of vitality and vehemence you see, vehemence, that is revelation, uncompromising, vitality, loss of energy, indomitable spirit, and a political Gandhi of Bengalis. Political Gandhi, you see, compared to Gandhi, that is symbolizing their hopes and voicing their grievances. Grievances, you need, this is the aspiration, the satisfaction of the sufferers. And Bangabaldu, this voicing, that's today's seminar, uh, that universal voice, and this voicing is already focused in 1971 in Time magazine. So try to understand how Bangabundu as a as his political consciousness, political idealism, political uh, activism, and his leadership, organizing power, and to motivate the people, and to inspire the hearts of the people, that once he told that my greatest strength is my love towards Bangla, Bengalis, and Bangladesh. And also my greatest weakness, that I love them too much. So all this, all this is universality, his voice, his political spirit, whatever that come, that is that came from out of his dead love for the Bangladesh his dream, his vision of Shunar Bangla. This today's Bangladesh, where we feel really, really feel proud of. And that's why Bangabundu is compared to political poet because he is visionary, because he is prophetic, because he is a dreamer, because he is in, endowed with in sensibility, as a extraordinary man should have, and also that is a very good artist. Artist means that is has created the art of his spaces, how to motivate, deliver, and inspire the people. So life is short, but art is long, and Bhagavan has turned himself into art. And also, a good poet is also a good critic of the society of his region, politics and time. So Bangabundu is also the critic, his critical vision uh, that inspired him to do so. And his revolutionary spirit, his reformer, and his, that is his love for common man, and his love for universal brotherhood. So dear audience, I'd like to finish here, and, and really we will be more uh, in the second seminar uh, we can discuss more in support of Bangladesh, Bangabundu, and uh, the Bangabundu's worthy daughter, Honorable Prime Minister, how he made the vision of Bangabundu uh, into successful mission, a prosperous, hunger-free, exploitation free Bangladesh that Sheikh Hasina, uh, Honorable Prime Minister, has made today. We will discuss in all this in future. So, finally, I would like to thank you all, uh, the, the organizers, and especially the English department uh, uh, and uh, and the chair, and especially our honorable uh, chief guest that he has, he is very much interested 
to organize any kind of seminar, I know, and he's very enthusiastic to hold such kind of seminars and to scatter the, like the West in the spirit of Bangabundhu towards the nations and the students and, and his kind, gracious presence is really has ornamented and added a extra a value and meaning towards this seminar and also the other uh, other pers pers attendants. I would like to thank you all. Thank you very much for giving me a floor and inviting me here and to grant me an opportunity to, to speak to you in love of Bangabundu and his vast canvas towards on life that I have been able to speak something on Bangabundu. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your informative and encouraging speech. You have truly reflected the aspects of visionary, dynamic, and strong leadership of Bangabundhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, architect of our independence. You have also shown us how the spirit of our great leader is resonated in the writings of Milton, Shelley, and also Whitman. We have really been enlightened by your insightful and encouraging speech. Dear audience, let's look forward to some different tests. So here comes Ms. Shuli Akhtar, lecturer, Department of English, Government Bangla College. She will recite a poem, O oh, Captain, My Captain, written by Walt Whitman. So please welcome Ms. Shuli Akhtar. Assalamu alaikum and good evening everyone. I would like to recite a poem, O oh, Captain, My Captain, My Walt Whitman. O oh, Captain, My Captain, our fearful ship is done. The ship is weathered every rag. The pride is of this one. The port is near. The bells are here. The people all exulting. My follow eyes, the steady queue, the vessel green and dull. But oh, hark, 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 oh, the beating drops of red. Or on the deck, my captain lies, falling cold and dead. Oh, captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag is flung, for you the bugle thrills, for you bouquets and ribbon dress, for you the shores they crowd you, for you the for you the call, the swaying mask, the river face is turning. Her captain, your father, his arm beneath your head, it is some dream that on the deck you have fallen cold and deep. My captain does not answer, his lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm. He has no pulse, nor grip. The ship is anchored straight and sound, its wise closed and done. From fearful teeth, the victor ship comes in weak, object one, exalted shores, and ring of bells. But I, with mournful trait, walk the deck, my captain lies, falling cold and dead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Shirley, for your vibrant recitation. Here is the time to listen to the respected chief guest, Professor Dr. Feddosi Khan, Principal of Government Bangla College. I humbly request her to deliver her speech. Distinguished audience, you all are aware that through her prudent and dynamic leadership, she has been able to uphold the image and dignity of Government Bangla College. She is highly committed, dedicated, and working relentlessly to lead our institution to a great height. So please welcome Professor Dr. Fridu Sikhan. Shamanito Upustiti. Assalamu alaikum. Prothome dhonda bajana chhi. Ingrazi bivage shakul shikha, shikharti o kormo chere brindoke. Shorbo kalle shorbo sister bangali. 
বাংলাদেশের মহান স্থপতি জাতির পিতা বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিবুর রহমানের জন্ম শতবার্ষিকীতে তাকে শ্রদ্ধা জানানোর জন্য আপনাদের এই আয়োজন সত্যি খুব প্রশংসার দাবিদার বিষয় নির্বাচনও খুবই সুন্দর ও শিক্ষণীয় হয়েছে বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিব এ ইউনিভার্সাল ভয়েস এ পলিটিক্যাল পোয়েট বিষয়টি আসলে আমার কাছে খুব ভালো লেগেছে বঙ্গবন্ধু তো আসলে একটা বিশাল হিমালয়ের সমান যেটা আমরা দেখেছি ফিরল ক্যাস্ট্রো বলেছিলেন আমি হিমালয় দেখিনি দেখেছি বঙ্গবন্ধুকে আসলে তিনি বিশ্বের নিপীড়িত নির্যাতিত মানুষের বাতি ঘর অন্যায় জুলুমের বিরুদ্ধে প্রতিবাদী কণ্ঠস্বর শান্তি ও মুক্তির দিশারি বঙ্গবন্ধু একক কোন সত্তা নন তিনি এক মহান আদর্শ তার ত্যাগ ও সংগ্রাম অবিস্মরণীয় স্বাধীনভাবে বাঁচার অধিকার অর্জনের জন্য বাঙালির হাজার বছরে লালিত স্বপ্নকে তিনি বাস্তবে রূপান্তরিত করেছেন তার সম্মোহনী নেতৃত্ব আর সাংগঠনিক দক্ষতার মাধ্যমে এখন শুধু বাংলাদেশ নয় সারা বিশ্বে প্রজন্মের পর প্রজন্ম জানতে পারছে কঠিন পরিস্থিতিতে কিভাবে একটি ভাষণের মাধ্যমে ভারসাম্য রক্ষা করেছিলেন বঙ্গবন্ধু কিভাবে শান্ত রেখেছিলেন কোটি মানুষকে আবার সংগ্রামের প্রস্তুতি বার্তাও দিয়েছিলেন কারো বিরুদ্ধে অভিযোগ না দিয়ে উস্কানি না দিয়ে কিভাবে আনন্দের আন্দোলন সংগ্রাম করতে হয় সে শিক্ষাও দিয়েছিলেন বঙ্গবন্ধু তার সাতই মার্চের ভাষণ এটাকে কাব কবিতা কাব্য না বলে আমরা মহাকাব্যই বলব নতুন প্রজন্মকে শিখিয়েছেন কিভাবে গণতান্ত্রিক উপায়ে সামনে এগিয়ে যেতে হয় অন্যের মতামতকে প্রাধান্য দিতে হয় ভাষণে বঙ্গবন্ধু বলেছিলেন যদি কেউ ন্যায্য কথা বলে আমরা সংখ্যায় বেশি হলেও একজন যদিও সে হয় তার ন্যায্য কথা আমরা আমরা মেনে নেব গণতান্ত্রিক মূল্যবোধ মানবিকতা আর অসম্প্রদায়িক কথার এক মহাকাব্যিক রচনা এই ঐতিহাসিক ভাষণ ভাষণটি উজ্জীবিত করে করে এগিয়ে নিয়ে যাওয়ার স্বপ্ন দেখায় আমাদের আসলে বললে তো অনেক কথা চলে আসে আমি আগাবো না অনেকেই অনেক তুলনা করেছে এবং প্রত্যেকেই আপনারা সুন্দর উপস্থাপন করেছেন এবং খুব সুন্দর করে ইংরেজ ইংরেজ কবিদের সাথে তুলনা করে বঙ্গবন্ধুর উপস্থাপন ভাষণের উপস্থাপনা দিয়েছেন আমার ভালো লেগেছে যেমন ইংরেজ কবি উইলিয়াম ওয়ার্ডসের যে প্রিফেস প্রিফেস টু লিরিকাল ব্যালেন্স সে কথা বলেছেন যেখানে আছে নিরন্তর প্রবাহিত বাংলায় করলে দাঁড়ায় নিরন্তর প্রবাহিত নিরবিচ্ছিন্ন অনুভূতির সাথে তুলনা করা হয়েছে তিনি বলেছিলেন আমি দেখেছি লেখা আছে মিস্টার ইয়াহিয়া সাহেব আপনি পাকিস্তানের প্রেসিডেন্ট আসুন দেখুন বুঝুন আমরা আমার নিরস্ত নিরস্ত্র গরিব মানুষদেরকে কিভাবে মেরে ফেলা হয়েছে তারপর বিচার করে কথা বলুন আমেরিকান কবি জন কিটসের এবং ওডের টু অ্যাটন গ্রন্থের ভাবাবেগ হিসেবে তুলনা করা হয়েছে তার ভাষণে অনেক ভাবাবেগের কথা ছিল যেমন আমরা কি অন্যায় করেছিলাম আমরা কত রক্ত দিব কার সাথে কথা বলবো যারা আমাদের লোকদের গুলি করে হত্যা করেছে ইংরেজ কবি উইলিয়াম শেক্সপিয়ার এবং পোয়েট লিয়ন বেকামের কথাও এখানে এসছে এবং হুইটম্যান শেলি এদের কথাও এসছে এবং হুইটম্যানের কথা বললে তো এসেই যায় নজরুলের কথা এবং নজরুলের বিদ্রোহী সত্তা হুইটম্যানের সং অফ মাই সেলফ এগুলি সে তুলনা করেছে এবং আমার মনে হয় অনেকদিন পর আমি স্টুডেন্ট লাইফে ফিরে গেলাম তবে যেহেতু আমি বাংলা সাহিত্যের স্টুডেন্ট আমার কাছে কিন্তু নীলবন্ধ গুণের কবিতার একটু মনে হয় একটু শোনা উচিত শোনানো উচিত নীলবন্ধ গুণ কি করেছেন রবীন্দ্রনাথের সাথে বঙ্গবন্ধুকে তুলনা করেছেন এবং তিনি যে কবিতা লিখেছিলেন কবিতাটা হলো স্বাধীনতা এ শব্দটি কিভাবে আমাদের হলো আমি একটু কবিতাটা পড়ি এটা কবিতা বললে কিন্তু ভুল হবে এটা একটা মেসেজ যারা সেই সময় ছিল না আমি কিন্তু তখন মনে হয় টুতে পড়ি আমি রমনা থানাতে আমার মা থাকতো রেসকোর্স ময়দানে খুব কাছে সে ভাবাবেগুলি আমার মনে আছে কিন্তু তোমরা অনেকেই যেন এখানে আছো স্টুডেন্ট তো অবশ্যই টিচাররাও তখন পৃথিবীতেও ছিল না আর অনেকে থাকলে ছিলাই না পৃথিবীতে তারা অত সেই সময়কার কথা এই কবিতায় চলে এসছে কেউ হয়তো কবিতাটা পড়েছে 
হয়তো কেউ পড়েনি শুনেছি একটু একটু খণ্ড খণ্ড তা আমার মনে হলো এটা কবিতা আকারে নয় আমি তো আবৃত্তি কারক নই আমি একটু মেসেজ আকারে বলি একটি কবিতা লেখা হবে তার জন্য অপেক্ষার উত্তেজনা নিয়ে লক্ষ লক্ষ উন্মুক্ত অধীর ব্যাকুল বিদ্রোহী শ্রোতা বসে আছে ভোর থেকে জনসমুদ্রে উদ্যান সৈকতে কখন আসবে কবি এই শিশু পার্ক সেদিন ছিল না এ বৃক্ষের ফুলের শোভিত উদ্যান সেদিন ছিল না এই তন্দ্রাচ্ছন্ন বিভিন্ন বিকেল সেদিন ছিল না তাহলে কেমন ছিল সেই শিশু পার্কে বেঞ্চে বৃক্ষে ফুলের বাগানে ঢেকে দেওয়া এই ঢাকার হৃদয় মাঠখানি জানি সেদিন সব স্মৃতি মুছে দিতে হয়েছে উদ্ধত কালো হাত তাই দেখি কবিহীন এই বিমুখ প্রান্তরে আজ কবির বিরুদ্ধে কবি মাঠের বিরুদ্ধে মাঠ বিকেলের বিরুদ্ধে বিকেল উদ্যানের বিরুদ্ধে উদ্যান মার্চের বিরুদ্ধে মার্চ শিশু পার্কের রঙিন দোলায় দোল খেতে খেতে তুমি একদিন সব জানতে পারবে আমি তোমাদের কথা ভেবে লিখে রেখে যাচ্ছি সেই শ্রেষ্ঠ বিকেলের গল্প সেদিন এই উদ্যানে রূপ ছিল ভিন্নতর না পার্ক না ফুলের বাগান এসবের কিছুই ছিল না শুধু একখণ্ড অখণ্ড আকাশ যেরকম সেরকম দিগন্ত প্লাবিত ধুধু মাঠ ছিল দুর্বা দলে ঢাকা সবুজের সবুজ বয় আমাদের স্বাধীনতা প্রিয় প্রাণীর সবুজ এসে মিশেছিল এই ধুধু মাঠের সবুজ কপালে কবজিতে লাল সরু বেঁধে সেদিন মার্চ মাসের রেসকোর্স ময়দানের কথা বলছেন তিনি কপালে কবজিতে লাল সরু বেঁধে এই মাঠে শুটে এসেছিল কারখানা থেকে লোহার শ্রমিক লাঙল জোয়াল কাঁধে এসেছিল ঝাঁক বেঁধে উলঙ্গ কৃষক পুলিশের অস্ত্র কেড়ে নিয়ে এসেছিল প্রদীপ্ত যুবক হাতের মুঠোয় মৃত্যু চোখে স্বপ্ন নিয়ে এসেছিল মধ্যবিত্ত নিম্ন মধ্যবিত্ত করুণ কেরানি নারী বৃদ্ধ বেশ্যা ভবগুরু আর তোমাদের মতো শিশু পাতা কোরানির দল ছিল একটি কবিতা পড়া হবে তার জন্য কি ব্যাকুল প্রতীক্ষায় মানুষের কখন আসবে কবি কখন আসবে কবি শত বছরের শত সংগ্রাম শেষে রবীন্দ্রনাথের মতো দীপ্ত পায়ে হেঁটে অতপর কবি এসে জানো তার মঞ্চে দাঁড়ালে এই যে বলছে শত বছরের শত সংগ্রাম শেষে কেন বলেছেন এই একটি লাইন দিয়ে তিনি অনেক কিছু বলে গেলেন বাঙালি শত শত বছর ধরে স্বাধীনতার আকাঙ্ক্ষা শোষণ করেছে বাঙালিকে শত শত বছর ধরে স্বাধীনতার আকাঙ্ক্ষা ছিল তাদের শোষণ করা হয়েছে তারা সংগ্রাম শত বছরের সংগ্রাম আঠারোশো সাতাশি সালে রঙ্গলাল বন্দ্যোপাধ্যায় মারা যান তিনি তার কবিতা লিখে গেছিলেন স্বাধীনতাহীনতা কে বাঁচিতে চায় বাঙালিরা চিরকালই ছিল স্বাধীনতা চেতনার মানুষ সেই জন্যই নির্বন্ধন বললেন শত বছরের শত সংগ্রাম শেষে রবীন্দ্রনাথের মতো দীপ্ত পাই তার মানে তিনি আরম কবি অতবার জনতার মঞ্চে দাঁড়ালেন এই চারটি লাইন হলো অক্ষর বৃত্ত এরপরে লাস্ট নয় লাইন হচ্ছে চরণ হচ্ছে আমাদের মাত্রাবৃত্ত ছন্দে চলে গেলেন তখন পলকে দরুন ঝলকে তরিতে উঠিল জল হৃদয়ে লাগিল দোলা জনসমুদ্রে জাগিল জোয়ার সকল দুয়ার খোলা এর যে তাহার বজ্র কণ্ঠবাণী বন সূর্য মঞ্চ কাঁপিয়ে কবি শোনালেন তার অমর কবিতা খানি এবারে সংগ্রাম আমাদের মুক্তির সংগ্রাম এবারে সংগ্রাম স্বাধীনতার সংগ্রাম সেই থেকে স্বাধীনতা শব্দটি আমাদের তা আমি মনে করি তোমরা তুলনা ইংলিশ বিভাগকে ধন্যবাদ যে নির্বাদ বন্ধুর কবিতার কথা বলা হয়েছে রবীন্দ্রনাথের সাথে তিনি তুলনা করেছেন এ কথা বলেছেন তখন আমার মনে হলো এই কবিতাটা আমাদের সবার জানা উচিত তখন এই রেস কোর্সে না খেলার মাঠ ছিল না শিশু পার্ক ছিল না পুলিশ কন্ট্রোল রুম ছিল পুরোটাই সবুজে সবুজ ছিল সেই পুরা রেস কোর্স ময়দানে লোকে জমাই ছিলেন এবং আমি খুবই খুশি হয়েছি আজকের এই সেমিনারে উপস্থিত থাকতে পেরে প্রধান অতিথি হতে পেরে পুরা আয়োজনটাই খুব প্রাণবন্ত এবং বন্ধনযুক্ত ছিল যাই হোক আমি কথা বেশি বাড়াবো না যতই দিন যাচ্ছে বঙ্গবন্ধু ততই উজ্জ্বল হচ্ছেন সর্বকালের সর্বশ্রেষ্ঠ বাঙালি হিসেবে তাকে ভালোবাসা জানাচ্ছে বাংলাদেশের মানুষ 
যুগের পর যুগ আসবে বঙ্গবন্ধুর এই তেজস্বী ভাষণের আলোচনা ও মূল্যায়ন আরো নানা দৃষ্টিকোণ থেকে হতেই থাকবে যা ধন্যবাদ আমি আর কথা বাড়াবো না ধন্যবাদ সবাইকে বিশেষ করে ধন্যবাদ দেওয়া আছি ইংরেজি বিভাগকে সকল শিক্ষক শিক্ষার্থী এবং কর্মচারীদের ধন্যবাদ সবাইকে জয় বাংলা জয় বঙ্গবন্ধু বাংলাদেশ চিরজীবী হোক থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ we express our best regards mm -hmm. and thanks to the respected chief guest for her valuable and enlightened speech finally i would like to invite professor sabrina ishrat respected chairperson of today's seminar and the head of the department of english government bangla college so please welcome professor sabrina ishrat Honorable Chief Guest, Professor Dr. Fedosi Khan, Principal, Kobin Bangla College. Respected Special Guest, Professor Mohammad Jangir Hussain, Vice Principal, Kobin Bangla College. Our Guest of Honor, Professor Abu Bakur Mia, Head of the Department Physics. And Convener of our Departmental Seminar Committee, Professor Supiya Saida Hassan, Respected Chairpersons, Dear Colleagues, students of different political ideologies my dear students and others assalamu alaikum department of english combin bangla college has organized a seminar to pay homage to our father of the nation bangabandhu sheikh mujibur rahman as a part of observing mujib year on the occasion of the centennial birth anniversary of our founding leader at the same time we also have made an effort to make a bridge between our father sheikh mujib's encyclopedic qualities and a few worldwide well known literary works where we find the glimpses of traits of our legendary figure sheikh mujib Our keynote speaker, Professor Elias Ahmed, has presented an excellent attempt to make us realize our father of the nation with his charismatic traits has become an idol of social, political, intellectual, and spiritual spirit of all ages for people from different classes, for different religion, from different nationalities all over the world and here lies the universal appeal of the traits of our father of the nation possessed rehana munni associate professor has made an extraordinary step to match the intellectual spiritual as well as social and political spirit of a very few literary giants John Milton, Walt Whitman, and Percy Bysshe Shelley, with the spirit of Bongo Bundu, these literary giants belong to different nationalities of different ages. It's almost an impossible task to cover the boundless literary ocean within this short span of time. Even then, I believe that. she has done a justice to her attempt shantanu rani kundu assistant professor through her rabindra sangeet has uplifted the standard of our program we as the bengali people we as the bengali people feel the very presence of tagore that is mixed mingled and fused at every sphere of our life shuli after lecturer has also through her recitation of whitman's poem o oh, captain my captain has paid tribute to our father of the nation who faced almost the same ill fate of usa president abraham lincoln do Whitman never made Abraham Lincoln 
physically face to face he felt a close connection to him and was greatly moved by lincoln's assassination whitman himself recited this poem himself several lectures on lincoln's death we are in case of bangabandhu no exception to it in our own social philosophical intellectual arena the spirit of bangabandhu always walks as an inspiration at all steps of blissful life thanks a lot professor abu bakumia head of the department physics for his graceful valuable presence as well as his speech he has glorified our seminar we feel honored the very speech of our respected vice principal sir professor mohammad jahangir hosain has enhanced the aesthetic purpose and literary value of our seminar his speech will continue to motivate us to find out the undiscovered part of english literature where we find the unique human qualities that match with our father of the nation his speech will be an asset for our department in our attempt to organize seminar he has played the role of our guide and philosopher the graceful presence of our honorable chief guest professor dr feddusi khan works as an inspiration for all of us she has enriched our knowledge of the glorious history of bangladesh her very art of speaking will continue to be an instance for us to follow thanks honorable principal madam for your exemplary delivery in our every step in every corner we feel the heartiest inspiration of our principal dr feddusi khan her motivational speech always shows us the path to go ahead at last i want to thank the seminar committee that is headed by professor Sufia Saida Hasan and members Lucky Rani Haldar assistant professor and Shantanu Rani Kundu assistant professor for organizing this program their joint venture has made it graceful the presenter Sanjukta Pal Choitali assistant professor has aesthetically maintained the lucidity harmony and coherence of the program lots of thanks to the committee concerned and the presenter to make this seminar charming as well as elegant thank you all for your gracious presence joy bangla long live bangladesh thank you very okay, much thank sir thank you very much thank you all thank, thank you. you very much sir for your remarkable and inspiring speech at the end of the seminar we again pay our humble respect and due homage to the greatest bengali of all times the father of the nation bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman now i would like to express our heartfelt thanks to the audience for giving their precious time for this occasion i hope you have enjoyed the program thank you very much for your kind presence and participation to make this seminar 
effective and successful. Now, with the kind permission of the chair, I declare the seminar end. <laughs>